It can be tough as an early game player to mix and match all the good investment commanders to make powerful marches that will at least last you until you get Season of Conquest. So today I'm going to be discussing the best early game pairings, which commanders I would put with which other commanders, so that you can still use those powerful commanders and bring them over to Season of Conquest and put them together in a good Season of Conquest march. Basically, I'm going to be telling you pairs for each troop type, one for KVK1, one for KVK2, because there's different commanders for each season, and then I'm going to be telling you how you could integrate them into a possible Season of Conquest march. If you're in the early game or are considering going back to the early game like I am, this is some of the most valuable information you can get, since commanders in Rise of Kingdoms are everything. So basically what I'm going to discuss in this video is, I'm going to talk about commanders. So let's say, for example, you got, I don't know, Cow Cow. And if I think Cow Cow is one of the good commanders, I'm going to discuss how you could put Cow Cow with a Season of Conquest commander, and also a pre-Season of Conquest commander, to still keep your account in fighting shape, pre-Season of Conquest, and in Season of Conquest. We'll start off with Cavalry, and I've got the Legendary and Epics up, because for KVK1, you're going to have to use some Epic commanders. It's basically the way, unless you're spending at least $1,000 before your KVK1, and that's a lot of money, a lot of people don't spend that much. So this list will be a bit more catered towards some lower spenders. I will mention some Whaley pairs, but not too much. Starting off, the only way to really do any cav in KVK1, unfortunately, is to be spending money, because Minamoto is the best cavalry commander. If you could get him to 5-5-1-5, five, 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 so maxing the first two skills, not maxing the third and maxing the fourth, you'd be best set with him, even as like a lower spender. That's like maybe $200, and it's like 300 to max him. So, I mean, it's expensive, but he's such a good commander, KVK 1, 2, 3, and in Season of Conquest. I mean, he's probably just worth it. He's the cheapest you'd get any commander if you're spending money. Like, I think I spent like 100 bucks on YSG, plus like two years of waiting. However long, it was like a year of waiting, basically, to max him. So, spending in Rise of Kingdoms, nothing's really that cheap if you want to get commanders. For Cavalry, KVK 1, I recommend simply put Minamoto and Bybars. Bybar's really powerful commander for the most part. He has actually got the best epic AoE compared to other commanders. And also, I think Bybar has some good stats. Yeah, it's attack, but in the early game, having attack isn't actually as bad as it is in the late game. And then I like how he's got that march speed about from leaving battle. Also, when you expertise him, that's when he gets the damage to five targets instead of three. And that's when I think Bybar's becomes really powerful. So if you are before KVK1, you're like going to be in KVK1 in like a week or two and you want to do a cav march, you got Max Minna then I would think just start working on buy bars right now. Stop whatever you're doing, because if you've got a max min and you put him with buy bars, that march is going to trade really, really well, especially with that AoE. Now, some alternatives, you, if you have a cow cow at like 5151, five, then you can consider using cow cow with Minamoto. Cow cow is pretty okay up until season three. Other than that, I think he's a very, very bad season of conquest commander. His relic is very underwhelming, and I mean, there's definitely better options, but in KVK1, Cow Cow Minamoto is probably the strongest march besides YSG, like Charles Martello or Richard. So, Cow Cow with Minamoto is certainly an option. And another option is YSG with Minamoto, but you have to have max two commanders that are legendary, which is very tough. Plus, I think Cow Cow, a lot of people have access to him from the gold chests, and he doesn't cost any money, technically. He's also coming to the Wheel of Fortune, so if you know you're going to be a Cav main KVK1, you may consider doing it if you spend a little bit of money, and you know you're going to spend a little bit of money for like other commanders anyways. You could consider maybe getting a max first skill on your cow cow in the start of the game. KVK2, nothing really shifts too much with that Minamoto march. I'd probably still keep it if you're going for two marches, the Minamoto with a buy bars or cow cow. Then I would get Saladin, and I would probably have to say you use Saladin with Ethelfled. Saladin with Ethelfled is really, really powerful. You can see Ethelfled is actually a very good commander with Saladin. So if we read Ethelfled's skill, she actually benefits when you expertise her from being slow, slowing down troops. And Saladin has a slowdown effect. Saladin's also tanky. He's fast with his calves. He also has other debuffs like health reduction. And basically, that's the best debuff march you get before Season of Conquest by far and away is a Saladin Ethelflaed. So if you want two cab marches, you go with that Saladin Ethelflaed, and that's definitely going to be very powerful. If you still want to get Saladin, then you can consider going in with Saladin and Minamoto and putting your Ethelflaed elsewhere if you just don't want to use buy bars anymore and you don't have a cow cow but you have a max minna, certainly an option. If you do want to get just double calves on that one march, you'll have to get Genghis Khan, who I don't think is actually that bad with his new relic, but here's the thing. I don't like 
Belisarius, and I don't like Pelagius for the field. I feel like they're pretty underwhelming compared to like five bars. So if I were you, you'd probably have to get that Khan if you're going for a double Cav March only Cavs. But really, I think Saladin and Ethel Fled so powerful, I would just stick with that. Now, the way I would integrate this into Season of Conquest is first of all, I would keep the Saladin and Ethel Fled because Saladin and Ethel Fled is surprisingly still a very good March in Season of Conquest. Yes, it's not overpowered, but it's going to be a great debuff March. Like if you're running two other Marches with a Saladin and Ethel Fled, I think it's certainly reasonable. Ethelflaed's got fairly high damage. She's got really good debuffs, like I said, and Saladin's tankiness is still fairly prominent. But here's where I would put a new commander. So I'd bring in your Nevsky at this point. Nevsky is the best cavalry commander, besides maybe Joan, that can be argued, in the game at the moment. And I'd put Nevsky with Minamoto. Done. That's the best cav march you're going to get if you spent your money to get Minamoto. Otherwise, you can do Saladin and Minamoto if you're free to play, since Saladin is your only, op only option pre-season of Conquest. The first thing you do when you get Season of Conquest, if you own Minamoto, is instantly don't buy that Ethelflaed Relic, so ignore the Ethelflaed Relic from the tutorial, you can push X on it, and then purchase instead the Minamoto Relic to get that, it's like 45% of stats there, and if you double Relic it, you've got like stupid amount, 30% of each stat, 60% of stats, crazy high amount of stats there on the Minamoto. Certainly the relic you should be focusing on if you're going to use a Minamoto. Saladin also has a relic, you can see here, 10% Cavalry attack and 10% Cavalry march speed. If you are maxing Taladin and you will be using him with like Nevsky, then yes, I think this relic is worth it. Otherwise, I wouldn't get it. Same thing with Genghis Khan. If you're going to use your Genghis Khan with Nevsky, which is kind of a possibility nowadays because he actually isn't too bad, I would definitely get the relic. Otherwise, it isn't worth it. Pretty simple. In terms of the Ethelflaed relic, if you're going with Saladin Ethelflaed, I would get it with Saladin's relic, but it is quite expensive and you're only getting attack and march speed, so that is for you to decide since getting these Relic Coins is much harder than it used to be. KVK1 Infantry, you've got two very good marches in my opinion, and a few alternatives. First off, if you don't have any Legendary Infantry Commanders, which is reasonable, I know a lot of players don't, you can use Sun Tzu with Isong, who is a Legendary Archer Commander. Isong and Sun Tzu actually synergize quite okay. Isong increases skill damage, Sun Tzu has AoE to 5 targets, so I mean, that also works, and Sun Tzu increases skill damage as well, and guess what? Isong has AoE to 5 targets. Isong doesn't really need to be an archer-only commander, and you can certainly mix and match him with other troop types. That's why I said Minamoto Isong is an option. And with Sun Tzu and Isong, it's a very powerful march, but it's very, very glass cannon, so if someone hits you, you're just going to die. Now, other infantry marches with only infantry commanders, if you've got a Charles Martel, you can move that Isong with your Charles Martel, and if you've got a Richard, you can use Richard and Sun Tzu. Certainly two good marches right there, Charles Martel with Isong and Richard with Sun Tzu and KVK1. That's what I saw the most of in my KVK1. Nowadays, people say you could use Bjorn with Sun Tzu, and I think that's a good epic march. If you're just starting out with like a baseline infantry march, maybe you're a caveman, you want one inf march. Don't really recommend having two troop types in KVK1, but if you do want it, there's an option for you. And if you just want to do like, maybe you could even consider Charles Martel with Richard. Very, very slow march in the way it deals damage, but very, very tanky, and it doesn't really get swarmed down much because of how powerful it actually is in like how many tanky stats it has. Richard heals, Richard does debuffs. Very annoying to swarm that march. So if you're going for like sustainability on the open field, then I think Richard with Charles Martel is pretty good. So looking into KVK2 marches, I think you at this point either must have an YSG or you have to have a Mehmed. Mehmed is a very, very good commander in Season of Conquest. He carries on as the best secondary commander besides Honda Tedakatsu. So if you're going for a Mehmed, I think it's not that bad of an investment. Maybe it's a 5511 at max. I wouldn't go past that. And I will try to get as many of his heads from the gold chests and also from the upcoming Wheel of Fortune and stuff as I could before I try and purchase his gold heads with my actual universal gold heads because these are very, very valuable. And so here's the thing. There's three possible infantry marches at this point. Well, four. My favorite, Alexander the Great and Sun Tzu. Definitely a very, very good infantry march there. If you're just going for one inf march, it's probably the best besides Alexander the Great and Isong. If you have Max Isong with Alex, that's going to shred KVK2. And you can also really carry that into Season of Conquest, and you can split those commanders and put them with two different commanders, which I'll talk about in a minute. So Alexander the Great with Sun Tzu, if you just want to don't get Isong and just go all in on infantry, certainly very good. And then your second march, if you want two infantry marches, which I think is fairly viable at this point. If you don't have a Saladin Ethelflaed, you can do Charles Martel with Ethelflaed. I really like that combo. I've seen people use it. It doesn't trade too bad. It's a pretty good debuff combo. And I mean, Charles Martel has some very tanky stats on him and a lot of counterattack. Thing I like about Charles Martel as well in KVK2, there's a lot of cities getting rallied because there's a lot more territory fighting in my opinion. 
I like to have Charles Martel as like a city garrison with an Isong or as even any AOE commander like Sun Tzu. So having Charles Martel also gives you that buffer if you do get rallied or swarmed in your city. Just a little bit of time to, I guess, pop a shield or get away without taking as many deads. Or you can use Charles Martel with Mehmed, certainly reasonable and something I could recommend. Or you could swap it, you could use Charles Martel with Isong and Mehmed with Alex, also two other options. It depends on who you'd want the march speed to go to. Preferably, I think you'd want your march speed on your Isong because Isong is a bit more of a powerful commander than Mehmed. And Mehmed, like Isong, doesn't have any march speed, so the thing with Mehmed and Charles Martel is you are missing the march speed there. But if you got an Alex, what I would do is I would go down and I would get yourself a Scipio Africanus and put them together. And I think Alex actually synergizes quite well, even though it's a double shield and they don't stack, I think it's still fairly good. And I also really like the march speed here on Scipio, stacking with Alex's march speed, giving you 45% march speed. Put that with the wind scars, you're out of there in any battle that you get caught out in. If someone's about to attack you, you just push retreat, you're gone. You've actually run through the enemy murder ball, you run back to your city, refresh your march, and you attack them instead. That's basically what happens. So also with your Charles Martel, you can carry him on and you can put him with like a Harold. Harold is fairly good still, in my opinion. Or you can still stick with that Charles Martel Ethelflaed or Charles Martel Mehmed, and I think that's still fine. Relic-wise, I would definitely get Mehmed's Relic if you've got it. If you've got him, and Mehmed's Relic is insane. Like, I've got him double relic He's probably one of the best secondaries with this Relic. It's just stupid. And Charles Martel's Relic is not too bad but it's somewhat underwhelming. You're just getting a bit of health and a bit of attack. So if I were you, I would try and skip the Martel Relic if I can. So you may want to bench the Martel and just use the Mehmed. But then again, you probably didn't put too many gold heads in Martel, so it's not that bad of investment. Or just don't put any gold heads in Martel and just hope you get him from gold chests or purchase him from the daily special offer. Now, as an Archer man myself and someone who definitely knows a lot about Archer Commanders in Season 1 because I played with them, I can say they are very good in Season 1. Purely because a lot of players are using infantry. A lot of players are using non-skill damage commanders like Charles Martel with Richard or Charles Martel with like an Ethel Fled, which isn't bad. But yes, it's not going to be an Isong in a 1v1 because Isong has such high skill damage. He's archer troops. He, you probably have territory bonuses. You probably have buffs going. You probably have the better gear since archer troops have better gear. So KVK1 archers are nuts in my opinion. If you just go all in on them, they're really good. After that, not so much. But talking KVK1... Isong with any epic archer commander will work. I used it personally. If you're a 5511 Elcid or a 5511 Thutmose, that is better, but definitely tougher to get, and you either have to spend your gold heads on gold key commanders, which I don't recommend, or win the Mightiest Governor for Elcid. Thutmose is actually getting removed from KVK1, so I don't know how much longer he's going to be there, and I'm not going to talk about him too much because he's going to be in KVK3. If you do win the Elcid MGE and you do get a 5511 Elcid, He's better than any of the epic commanders, and I would put him with your Isong. Using an Elcid Isong is certainly powerful KVK1. I personally use Kusunoki Isong for the double AoE, and I tried Herman Isong when I did a couple of duels, and that definitely worked out. So, once you get to KVK2 and 3 is where it gets a bit more complicated. Depending on Thutmose's buff, you may be seeing a very powerful commander or not. For now, I'm going to not talk about him. I'm going to say, with Thutmose, don't put any gold heads in him right now unless you're going to rally KVK1 after this video. Or if you're going to get him from a bunch of gold keys in your gold chest and you do have him at 5511, you could use him. But here's what I would do. KVK 2 and 3 archers, you have to be spending a lot of money in my opinion. This is when you have to be running 2 cav marchers and 2 infantry marchers, or like 1 cav, 1 infantry, and then 2 archers for them to get the most value. At least $2,000 a year. That's what I'm saying if you want to use archers in KVK 2 and 3. Because you have to get Edward of Woodstock. He's rubbish in Seasonal Conquest. I can't even give him any compliments. The only thing I like about him is his march speed and his health. That's it. Other than that, his skills are, yes, powerful looking. 2,500 damage factor. Jeez. Thing is, it's a high rage requirement. You're losing rage. Contrary to popular belief, you actually do lose rage after you throw your active skill. Even if he's the primary, you lose rage from Rejuvenate and from Talents. And also, you lose rage from that turn. And you lose rage if you have, like, a Ring of Doom. Even though you won't have a Ring of Doom. Sorry, a Horn of Fury but you won't have a Horn of Fury this early. So using Edward of Woodstock with YSG is your best option there. And then the other option is just Tamiris with probably an Emotep or Tamiris with a either a Thutmose, who you should have access to at this point and is probably good depending on his buff, or a Tamiris with like an Ilcid. That's it. There's really no other options there. You could also split it and still run YSG Ilcid and then Edward of Woodstock and Tamiris, which is definitely probably better just because Edward of Woodstock's rage requirement is actually beneficial for Tamiris trying to hold off on that active skill. 
However, you do need to be spending like a fair amount of money to be using this because otherwise you can't really benefit from Tamaris. Because what I would do in KVK Season of Conquest, I presume you've spent a fair amount of money. You've got yourself a CPO and a Alex. You've got yourself a Nevsky and a Minamoto because you're spending money. And you've probably got yourself like a Salad and an Ethelflaed. Then I would get yourself a Boudicca and a YSG, probably your best bet. So that's definitely two very powerful commanders. And Boudicca is still very, very good, even though Zhu Lang may be releasing soon. I do say you maybe should wait for Zhu Lang and see how that combination works with YSG and Zhu Lang. I don't think it'll be bad, but we'll have to see. Zhu Lang is the new Season of Conquest Archer Commander coming soon. Other marches, all right, for your Tamiris, you'd have to put her with an Artemisia or put her with like a Henry or something weird like that. Because Tamaris is a great 6th march and that's it. She's just great at debuffing. So you do know now that you could split the archers up with the Alex. So if you've got Alexander the Great with YSG, split the Alex and put him with CPO. Split the YSG and put him with Boudicca. Basically, archers are very high spender and I don't recommend them for Season 2. Now, if you did enjoy this video, me talking all about pre-season of Conquest Commanders, please do consider subscribing. My goal is 1,000 subscribers by June when I start my restart account. My restart account is going to be giving everyone all the best siege information because there will be a siege on the account. Trust me, it's going to be an entertaining ride, okay? Now, I do thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.